Aloha and hello, everybody. What's going on out there? This is Miho, as always, your co-host for the Too Close to Call podcast. And this is the Tee em Up podcast. Where Tee em Up. We talk about the NBA playoffs. Have you ever been teed up, Miho? Dude, I got teed up a bunch of times. Yeah. I've been teed up in rec league games in the city of Philadelphia by like these random uh, referees, right? So we were walking down the court one time and I said something. And then, like, two possessions later, we were running down and the ref starts talking to me. And I'm like, don't fucking talk to me. And he just goes, boop, T. And I was like, are you fucking serious? Oh, you're a big tough guy. Big tough guy. And he's like, do I really have to throw you out? I was like, seriously? You're going to throw me in a rec league because you just started fucking talking to me. I told you to shut the fuck up. So now you're going to toss me. And he's like, dude, I can't toss you. Like, what's going to happen? Like, yeah. we're not doing yeah. anything. But I was like, yeah, man, come on. Like, I just I couldn't take it. My last game in my summer league that I play in. There you go. First game's coming up in a couple of weeks. Better get the old jump shot ready. But uh, yeah, I got teed up. And then uh, next trip down the court, I tore my hamstring. So mm. that was a little justice for myself. Oh, so you're coming off the injured list for this year. But I looped the kid that pissed me off into a double technical. So nice. I was like, yeah. All right. Break it even. <laughs> <laughs> But like we said, tee them up, NBA playoff podcast, and we'll start with the hottest series, man, the Golden State Warriors and Houston Rockets. Golden State hold serve, 2-0 at home. Yep, Golden State doing what I said, Golden State in five. It seems like the Warriors have a different guy step up every game that they need, and uh, we need to start having a conversation. If they go and win another one where everybody's talking about LeBron, KD may be better served as one of the greatest of all time. He's the best scorer. I don't know how well-rounded well, his game is. To as Jeff well as he's Gundy playing on the night. best team, dude. I agree. Like, come on. Let's get into game one. Did you see the ending of game one? What'd you think on the three with Steph, the three foul, non foul with Harden? Chris Paul kind of getting fouled, flipping at the refs. He ends up getting fucking tossed with a couple of seconds yeah. left. What was your take on that whole ordeal? Uh, I think Harding did get fouled. I think the guy clearly stepped into his space when he was going and didn't allow him to uh, finish the jump shot. So I just got a little annoyed when the Rockets were all about, like, I just want a fair shot at this. And it's like, well, you can so win the, the game deal. other times. Pags. Too. And finally, it's brought into the forefront of the national news, the video where I was talking about how he jumps forward on these steps. I noticed backs. no one gave us credit for it. Nobody cited us it's not a big deal i tweeted at scott van pelt it's not a huge issue but um <laughs> he ran a video that basically said when harden he showed it when harden is wide open and nobody's around him and he just shoots like his natural shooting motion he literally goes forward like six inches right he put a little red circle under where he jumped and where he landed and they were almost on top of each other and then he did it for a step backs and it's clear that when he jumps and when he lands, it is now two feet in front of where he was. Right. So as a referee's point of view, that's clearly not a natural motion because when you're just shooting to shoot, you don't do that. So this whole not allowing him to land or if it's not a natural motion, then you're allowed to bump him. Right. Because you think he's sticking out. So the problem is there he does it on these types of shots but not normal ones when nobody's around him. So it's clearly part of like the charade of yeah. the move. Right. And that's how, why it's hard to ref. And that's why these refs are saying that's not natural. You're kicking out. And it's like, yeah, because when you normally shoot, you don't. Yeah. So what's your take on that whole thing? Here's the thing. The referees watch film, too, and they see this shit happening every day. And if they're under the general consensus, like we're not calling this, then I think they're well in their right to be able to be like james we're not fucking calling this because you do this right like, and paul pierce came out and essentially said then it gets worse because he does it gets a little bit of bump thinks to himself oh the refs didn't see it so now i have to exaggerate it even do it further even worse to make sure that they see it and right. then they go well that doesn't even like look no he's like what the fuck you're not calling it ever yeah and it's just a whole ordeal when i'm like listen dude just fucking worry about making the jump shot yeah Exactly. Gotta worry about getting fouled. And that was the difference at the end of the game, in my opinion, was Steph, step back, only worried about making it, fucking buckets. Harden comes down, jumps up, throws the hips out, misses the shot. Well, no shit, because you weren't even concentrating yeah, on the shot. Yeah, you're trying to get fouled and go to the free throw So line. just knock it off and make the fucking jump shot. Exactly. And quit your bitching. 
Yeah. Hot take. Well said. Hum, babe. <laughs> well said. Oh, hey, man. and then he gets his eye freaking gouged in uh, game two. Yeah, that was tough. Wasn't a fan of that. He couldn't fucking see, and his play reflected that. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see if he can bounce back here in game three back in Houston. I expect them to win one, if not both, back at home. I do think we'll still have a series. But, yeah, the Warriors doing what they're supposed to do. Without Boogie. Pretty impressive. And the 2-3 series across the board, is a. it looks like it's going to be a good series. The Nuggets and Trailblazers tied at one. The Nuggets came out, own game one, and Trailblazers made some adjustments, turned around, took a lower scoring game two. So it looks like defense going to be the answer there for the Trailblazers. Yeah, and Lillard uh, did not have his standard playoff game, uh, game two, and they still won the game. So that's a good sign for the Trailblazers. It's kind of by committee there. Yeah. I think CJ led him in scoring, and yeah. he only had like 21 or 22 or something like that. Yeah, if you could be well balanced and play good defense, hey, that's a recipe to win. But so, going back into Portland. I'm rooting for Portland, man. Let's yeah, go. CJ. Warriors, Trailblazers in the finals. Why not there in the Western Conference? And then the Warriors win in three, four. <laughs> three. Three. They'll just be like, ah, oh, this guy's ah, over. Let's go. Fuck let's it. hang him up. <laughs> On the Eastern Conference side, the Milwaukee Bucks and Celtics. The Celtics came out and whooped them in game one, and everybody thought, oh, shit, here's the Celtics team that we've been waiting for. Milwaukee doesn't stand a chance. And then Giannis basically flexed on him and was like, not so fast. Yeah, this uh, series hasn't had a close game in it yet. Yeah, first <laughs> game by 22, second game by 21. So what's the spread in this one, 19? Probably. <laughs> Let's see. I could see it being a really low-scoring game, uh, this one, and then everyone just being like, what the hell is going on in this series? They head back to Boston. I do think this one goes a little bit longer just due to the talent on both teams. Yes. They're very balanced, and you know Boston has an off-night shooting, doesn't go well. Giannis has an off-night. They kind of go back and forth, and I'm interested to see how that plays out. I, I don't know who would be the favorite right now if you kind of had to ask me, so I'll take Milwaukee just because I don't want Boston to fucking win. Yeah, if I had to lean towards one, I'd lean towards Boston just because of experience and everything like that with all the guys on their roster have sure. been through this before. But we saw it last year. This went to seven. I have no right. if fans are butts to think that it's going to be at seven again. Going to go again, and that would be good for the winner of the Raptors Sixers series, which is right now two to one, seventy Sixers. And if they could close things out sooner than later, obviously, and the other one goes seven, they could have themselves a little bit of time off in that between would be series. Nice. That would be very nice. The Raptors took game one in pretty convincing fashion. The Sixers made a couple of defenses adjustments and attitude adjustments more so on that side of I the ball. I think you're right on that. Is I've attitude. really kind of taken things over in these last couple of games, and we'll see if that continues game four on Sunday with a couple of days off in between here. But let's see, dude. Early line is Toronto still favored in game four. All the locals around Philly are saying this is over in five, maybe six. I don't know where Toronto's getting it. There's nobody but Kawhi. And the national media is still on the Raptors, man. So what are your thoughts in regards to kind of the sense locally compared to nationally? Now, last game yesterday, I had a very good feeling about the Sixers just because of being at home, but I could very well see a letdown game here. I think it's going to be a close game, but I can't imagine the Raptors are just going to keel over and die. That being said, somehow the Sixers pull out game four, then I do think the Raptors are going to keel over and die because I think that Toronto is just going to be deflated. Like, oh my God, we went down 3 1. Like, the history of Toronto in the playoffs, I think that might be too much for them to overcome. So, hopefully, the Sixers go for the throat and take game four. I'm with you there. I do think it's going to be a deep series, though. Kawhi, I'm not going to bet against them. That motherfucker is so good. He's shooting like 75% on two point jump shots. Like, he doesn't miss in that mid range game. The three pointers, a little bit off yet. You can still see that's the part of his game, kind of like LeBron, that will be the last of the evolution. Yeah, but when he shoots them and makes them, they don't touch anything except for. (laughs) He's got that line drive, though. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of the. I don't know, the the Steph Curry high arcing tends yeah. to be better, and he really line drives it, which is why it kind of hits the back part of the rim and just sneaks on through. And that mid-range game, dude, it's just – it's butter. So. I can see Nick Nurse going – Sixers up eight going into the fourth quarter. I can see Nick Nurse deciding not to sit Kawhi in the first four minutes of the fourth quarter. Yeah, let's play that guy the that entire shit, time. shit, like, yeah. Kawhi, I need you for 12 minutes. Get the fuck out yeah, there. Either that or I'm going to call more timeouts evenly distributed here. Correct. To make sure you don't come off the floor. But that's but. the shit Brett Brown did last year. Yeah. Where, like, live and learn. Brett Brown did that where he would take him out and get him a rest where 
I think it was game two where um, Anthony was – Greg Anthony was talking. He's like, try to steal some minutes. You're up by whatever, 10 points. Try to steal some minutes. See how long you can keep him beat out until you have to put him back in the game. Well, that's the nice part of the Sixers compared to the Raptors and the longevity of the series is they're really too deep when it comes to star power. And with the Sixers being four, they can kind of rotate right. who's on and really not have that huge drop-off when you have to sit one of the two because then all the – energy and attention is on the other guy and where the Sixers still have multiple options. But. And the fact that they have two guys that can run the point with uh, that is nice. Butler and even Tobias can even do it if he has to. But uh, I mean, I'm waiting for Kyle Lowry to show some type of pulse <laughs> in this series other than getting fouled or fucking bumping right. uh, whoever into Deshaun Jackson. Simmons hitting him in the groin. Yeah, like baiting them but we'll see man i know we're both confident on our sixers and the adjustments they're showing and coming together as a squad we'll have to wait and see if we're getting the bucks or the celtics and hopefully i don't want to look ahead but it should be an exciting time here in the next couple weeks oh god i sure hope so but yeah the rest of the league it's gonna be these game threes are gonna be very telling like if the bucks go out and whoop the celtics again I might lean towards Milwaukee. A little being bit of momentum the, and yeah. tendencies there. And obviously, if Houston doesn't take game three, you would assume that one's done as well. Hey, and if I need to give my stat again, 75% of teams that win game three. That's true. Win the series. That's pretty good, guys. Take so. that one home. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, this is Miho from Too Close to Call. This was the Team Up podcast Team up. where we take you guys all around the NBA. We hope you enjoyed the trip. Enjoy the games this weekend, guys. Later. Peace. Peace.